today I would like to discuss some radios that every prepper, survivalist, outdoor enthusiast, and ham radio operator should have, in my opinion. These are little Chinese two-way radios that cover VHF and UHF, and they cover not only the 2, two meter and 70 centimeter, also known as 440 megahertz, ham radio bands, but they also cover MURS, multi-use radio service, GMRS, FRS, family radio service, that the little blister pack radios cover, and the VHF and UHF business bands. Now that's not to say that it's necessarily legal to operate on all these bands, but that it is possible. They are designed to, to be operated on those bands as two-way radios. They also receive the FM broadcast band, but they don't transmit there. And, of course, they are legal for use on the ham radio bands because ham radio bands don't require type classification. I don't know that they're not legal for use on multi-use radio service, for example, or GMRS. I'm just saying I don't know for sure that, that they are, but I know that some people do use them for those purposes. I used to sell ham radios and a little dual band ham radio like this even without the the rest of the coverage that uh, that these have without the in other words the ability to cover MURS FRS and so on a radio similar to this back when I sold them was three hundred dollars or more these cost a tenth of that approximately thirty to thirty five dollars each and that's with rechargeable batteries and a drop-in desktop battery charger. Also the antenna and basically everything you need to put it in service. Even a, a, an ear earpiece microphone that plugs into it. It pretty much comes with everything you need. Now this is the U, these two are the UV82 and this one is called a pofung. The rest of them are called baofing, which the names are similar and they don't really matter anyway. I think it's just different ways of spelling the same Chinese name. But uh, they're a little bit different and although I like both of them, overall I like the UV5 better. UV5 is a little bit smaller, but the main thing to me is that if you want to put this on a, a frequency, a set frequency, and give it to somebody to be able to stay in contact with them on a Jeep ride or whatever, a camping trip or, you know, what have you. The problem with this one that I've found is that, see, all of these have dual channels. Two channels. It's on the weather channel, by the way, right now. So, the way the UV82 works is the push to talk switch is actually two switches, one at the top, one at the bottom. And as I found out, that poses a problem to someone who is not trained in the use of these radios because you're talking to somebody on the top channel and because they don't, they're not really familiar with the radio, they may be push the bottom switch so they're transmitting on a different frequency unless you set it up so that both of the, the channels both the upper and lower channel are on the same frequency but uh, that's an unnecessary hassle the UV5's only have a single push to talk switch so it's always the frequency on top that transmits. So you can have dual watch and watch two separate frequencies, but you can only transmit on the top. That simplifies matters. All of these radios, as I mentioned, have FM broadcast band. And the way that works is 
there's a function switch. And you just give it a quick push. The UV82s, the function switch is underneath the push to talk, but it does the same thing. Thursday. It doesn't do it when it's receiving. We'll try this other one. There we go. And the function button also does this. For a long push. Now that's a worthless feature but uh, I guess it didn't cost them anything to include it. That's just a toy. And you sure don't want to set that off while you're hunting or whatever. But they are neat little radios and this UV UV5R version 2 plus that's the, the latest one. It's my newest one. And I like it better than any of the others. It's a, they have actually improved it as far, the, as far as the interface and the way it works and everything. But if you've learned how to program any of these, this one still programs the same way. With the exception of not having the band switch, so it's even a little bit simpler. Now it works very well. All of them work quite well actually, but the latest one, the version 2, works better than any of them. And it did, it had a smaller antenna than the rest of them, but I bought this Nagoya NA701 aftermarket antenna to go with it, and it works very well. It actually, it's about the same length, it's slightly longer, but that shouldn't make much difference. But it does seem to actually make a, a noticeable difference as far as uh, if you're in a fringe area, still being able to get into a repeater or, you know, greater simplex range. It does help. So that antenna is worth the money. And the radios are very much worth the money. Because, like I said, we were paying 300 plus for radios with the with not even as many capabilities as, as these have back when I used to sell them. Now these are thirty dollars or a little bit more and I will include a link in the video description so you can buy one if you want one or more than one in fact. So overall I very much recommend these. Thanks for watching.